Hi guys, and welcome to Team Leaky's first team building episode. We're kind of in preparation for one, round one versus the Blue Honeys, and I'm joined by my good friend and teammate, Hibiki. Hi friends, it's me, Hibiki. So, yeah, we are kind of just getting ready for our round one game with the Blue Honeys. Um, we can see on your screen now, we have pulled up our squad. Um, just to quickly go over it for you guys at home that don't know about it. So we picked in the draft, we went for Necrozma, Mega Gyarados, Sylvian, Mega Beedrill, Abomber Snow, Rotom Frost, Magma, Electabuzz, Ambipom and a Rhyperia. So we have a really cool squad here and we're going up against the Blue Hunters this week and their team is the Tapu Lele, Rotom Heat, Hippowden, Curum Black, Togetic, Mega Steelix, Electivire, Mega Sharpedo, Deoxy's normal form and Orangaroo. So they've got kind of like um, a few big Pokemon in there that we need to be careful of. Obviously the Tapu Lele with the Psychic Terrain. There's obviously um, a Trick Room setter in there with the Orangaroo and it's going to threaten as well with the Instruct. Um, we've also got to be really careful of Hibiki. Like one of the big things I was really worried about going into this matchup was the Psychic Terrain from Tapu Lele and then that Deoxy's really kind of taken big advantage of that with its like massive like base um, attacks and speed as well. Okay, so uh, first thing off, it's regular Curum. Fortunately, it's not black Curum, it's just like standard Curum. Oh. Uh, yeah, so it's a, that, that's a lot less scary. <laughs> yeah, that makes it way uh, less scary. Yeah, you're right. So that the Oxygen Psychic Terrain is super scary, but then again, we have the same thing. We have a Necrozma that's going to be in Psychic Terrain if they choose to bring it. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword there for them. Yeah, that's it. And I think like the Necrozma is going to like really enjoy the Psychic Terrain if mm -hmm. they bring it. And it makes me think, like one thing I think is, are they going to bring the Tapu Lele because of the Necrozma? Because mm -hmm. I think like as much as it's giving them a boost and really helping their team out and benefiting their team, it's kind of really helping us because we, we're going to be bringing the Necrozma like 100%. And it's just making yeah. it super powerful. The one thing in their team that really did, and I spoke to you about this, was the um, the Orangaroo Mega Steelix in a oh, trick yeah. room with the Instruct. Now that could be really scary, so we need to be like super cautious of that. But like the Necrozma, at the same time with its ability and it has access to trick room, was something that we kind of discussed a lot. And oh yeah. We, if the Trick Room goes up, we can reverse it or we can stay in the Trick Room because we've got our own Trick Room mods within the team that we can take advantage of ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. So that was kind of our thinking as well. But like the big players in the team, obviously for us, are going to be the Necrozma, the Mega Gyarados. Sylvian's going to be huge in there because it hits the, the Curum for really good damage, the Mega Sharpedo, um, and pretty much everything except the Rotom Heat for, for decent damage. Mega B drill was something that we kind of looked at, but then because of Mega, like the the Deoxys, its base speed is 150, so it just outspeeds Mega B drill, which causes us quite a few issues. So it was, um, and I think the Mega Gyarados being a dog type here kind of aids us a lot better um, against their team than the Mega B drill. So yeah, mm -hmm. um, just in general, like when we approach this matchup. Um, we were pretty certain at some point that they're most likely going to go with their hard trick room mode, uh, which is probably going to involve one of their two psychic type trick room setters, or Rangaroo or the Oxus, probably paired with a Togetic, and then they're most likely bringing Steelix and their Sand, uh, probably Rotom and then either Kyurem and Lele. So yeah, as Lee already talked about, Necros is going to be the big centerpiece here. It's going to be there, you know, stopping a trick room, reversing it if they put it up, just gonna give off this control of the battlefield right off the bat. So that's gonna be for sure the MVP of this matchup. And as Lee said, Mega Beatrel, it would actually be really good, but um, yeah, the Oxus is scary. It would still be great against Oranguru and Tapulele. But the fact that um, they most likely won't bring Tapulele, and even if they do, we have other ways around it. And it's very bad against a lot of their other stuff they have on the team. Um, made us decide that we're probably gonna leave it at home here. And we're still going to bring it to team preview just to confuse them a little bit. Um, that's going to be very valuable, I think, just putting the Mega B drill on team preview, going to make them think about what they want to lead and stuff, and might make it so we can steer their leads in a certain direction. 
Yeah, and the other Pokemon we're going to bring as well that we're not really going to include in our main team was the Ambipom as well. Oh, yeah. Um, the thing is, like, bringing the Ambipom, because it's got fake-out pressure, it kind of almost forces them to bring the Lele in a lead mm -hmm. matchup to kind of stop that fake-out being um, a thing for them. So it's kind of, again, putting almost a bluff and putting control back in our favour, forcing their hand almost to stop that because the Mega B drill Ambipom lead is really strong against their team. Yeah. Um, so they kind of need to bring the Lele. I, I feel anyway, that's what we kind of were thinking along those lines. Mm -hmm. The Rotten Frost here, we didn't really feel like it was going to offer too much. Um, and I think the Magmar as well, we, we kind of discussed, is going to be a lot more beneficial for us than the Electabuzz in this game with mm -hmm. the, the Follow Me, um, and especially the, the Stab Fire type attack against that Mega Steelix um, that we, ca we can take advantage of as well. It's also going to be really nice to protect our Mega Gyarados against the Rotom Heat if it starts firing off. Um, will o wisps and things like that. So, in general, Magma seemed the better choice um, of our Electabuzz in this situation. Mm -hmm. Should I pull up the um, the showdown and we can? Yeah, sure. Uh, let, let's go over the team like the way we built it. Um, so yeah, um, do you like uh, say it again? So the six we're planning on bringing um, for sure in this battle are going to be Necrozma, Mega Gyarados, Sylveon. A Boma Snow, Rapira, and Magmar. So these are going to be the six we will bring to the matchup. I'm pretty sure, guarantee, like, no matter what they bring, I think that's the six we've decided on, despite having two more in the back. Yeah. The Ambipom and the Beedrill. But we figured out that those six will be the best Pokemon to bring in this matchup. By far. And we've got kind of our leads already decided as well. Oh, yeah. We Maybe decided... we started with those two. So talk about the two lead Pokemon and then... Yeah, so our leads going into this match are going to be the Necrozma and the Obama Snow. Do you want to kind of take charge of this? Yeah, sure. So um, because this was kind of my idea, so um, before we actually considered bringing Ambipom, but then I was like, whoa, hold up. And then we talked about Obama Snow instead of Ambipom. And reasoning behind that is leading off with Necrozma and Obama Snow gives us pretty much the safest lead option against whatever they bring against us as their lead. So no, no matter what they put on the field, the Necrozma and the Abomas Snow are going to put in great work. So uh, I think you've pulled up Necrozma on your shadow right now, so let's talk about that first. Yeah, I've got the Necrozma. Uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So we run the Psychium C just to have that big nuke with the Prismatic Laser. going to be 200 base power um, as a Z move. For those of you who don't know, um, it's basically a Hyper Beam that's perfectly accurate and has a little bit more base power. So it's 160 base power, 100% accuracy, psychic type move uh, that makes you recharge on the next turn. So a uh, perfect move to use as a Z move. Um, then we have Trick Room. As we said, it's going to be pretty much the main purpose of having Crowsman in the matchup and Protect. And then we were a bit torn about the fourth move, but in the end we decided on Psychic um, just because we wanted to have a safe stat option for some big damage outside of um taking that one turn of recharging so we had a bunch of options i think we were toying with something like power jam mm -hmm. just so we can hit the sharpedo just in case and uh, there's a bunch of other moves like it has great move we have screens we have stealth frog there were a couple of options but in the end we decided to have some safe um guaranteed damage in the form of psychic would be the most beneficial yeah because they've only really got the the sharpedo um and the steelix mm -hmm. that kind of resist the psychic type attacks and you know, we've got so many different options for, yeah. for hitting those two outside of the psychic type of move. So I think, yeah, it just makes a lot more sense. Like, I pulled it up here and we had the power gem still in. I hadn't changed that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think the psychic makes a lot more sense. It's just a lot more reliable. Um, yeah. For the longevity, if Necrozma is sticking around on the field and we don't want to have to, you know, it's a nice option to have outside of that mm -hmm. recharge turn if we've already burnt the Z move. Um, and also with the Abominus so leading there, we're going to get the heal up. And, you know, if Deoxys does come out as a lead, we're going to instantly put on pressure to break that sash, yeah. which we kind of expect it to carry as well. Mm -hmm. So um, about the Abominus now, since I kind of came up with the idea on how to use it. So for the matchup, I thought Focus Sash is going to be the item of choice here. It's just gonna give us so many more options against one. Like that's the key. Like that's the key to leading this those two Pokemon against any kind of lead they have. 
like having that sash is gonna make it so that we will win pretty much any lead matchup they can bring or that they're likely to bring and that way um what i thought was okay so what they could do they could like i'm, I'm still pretty certain they're probably gonna leave Togetic plus a trick room setter but just in case they do lead their power down we have hail on their bonus now and not just for the lead matchup but in general like setting up that hail will disrupt them really hard because they're most likely relying on having that sand up for the big damage on Steelix, on the Mega Steelix, because of the sand for ability, and we take that away with Hail. So that is the filler move we're using here on top of you know the standard stab, Blizzard, Energy Ball, and then Protect. So um, yeah, that Hail is going to be key in case they do decide to either lead Power Down or just bring it in general. So like, if there was no functions as a bit of Disruptor, um, we get like Blizzard is gonna score a knock on the Oxus, or at least bring it down to Sash, where Hale will be able to knock it out. If they bring a Ranguru, we still have the Cruzma on the field, so we can risk the Trick Room. So these two leads are gonna pretty much make the matchup for us. So uh, we have to be very careful in how we play our first turn, I believe, because that's gonna decide the rest of the game for sure. Yeah, because if you guess, you know, if we guess the the Trick Room wrong or set it up for them, and things could go. Yeah, like you say, it's so important to just get that first turn right and then we can kind of build on that. But um, yeah, so there are leads. And then the rest of the team that we're going to bring, we've got the Mega Gyarados. And the moveset here, we, we kind of went for Waterfall, Crunch, Dragon Dance, Protect. Um, there's also the option there to, to have the Earthquake for the, the Rotten Heat. But... Mm -hmm. Um, we kind of discussed and decided that the crunch is going to be way more beneficial in this matchup than the earthquake ever sure, would be, yeah. uh, especially for that Aranguru. So, mm -hmm. if we can get to plus one uh, with the Dragon Dance, um, mm -hmm. and we can KO the Aranguru in one shot, yeah. which takes that that kind of their speed control completely mm -hmm. out of the game, um, which is really nice. It obviously resists as well any psychic type attacks as well. The thing well, is, like, they're probably aware of that uh, with the Mega Gyarados being a big threat, but they don't, like, the EV spread that we've got kind of covers all the big oh, yeah. kind of um, threats that yeah. could come out from their side as well. Mm, yeah, the EV spread is really good, so we decided to go on with, like, a bulky Mega Gyarados there. We have very, very low speed and also considerably low attack, but... The fact that it has 155 base attack um, makes it just so that we can go with the lower attack stat because Ring Dance is going to make up for it. And in terms of speed, we just looked at Blue Honey's team and besides the Mega Sharpedo get, getting speed boost in his regular form and the Mega and the Deoxys, we outspeed anything on the team after Ring Dance. So that's kind of the thought behind it. We were like, okay, we don't need that much speed. Like if they get the plus one, we outspeed everything anyways. And there's also the thing that if we go that slow, if we're not boosted, we can kind of abuse the trick room because we might be slower than some of their stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that, that thing tanks a lot of hits. So I think we are able to swipe pretty much anything they'll throw at us there from their team, which is pretty neat. Also, Gyarados is huge for Intimidate. So uh, we thought about certain um, turn one, two situations that Blue Honeys could um, impose on us. And we figured that with the Intimidate, option in the back against the Mega Steelix, like even something like um, Instruct Earthquakes in Sand or something silly like that will not really do too much damage to us, so that Intimidate is going to be key, which is why this Mega Gyarados is such a great Pokemon to have on the team. Yeah, and it's going to be kind of important for us to kind of pick our right moment for when to Mega it, um, but mm -hmm. it's, it should be straightforward really. Um, yeah. But yeah, looking forward to using this Mega Gyarados, I think it's going to be like a real key kind of member to the team really mm -hmm. so then we've got our sylvian um we went for hyper voice calm mind helping hand and protect we've given a super berry the i have a berry um, mm -hmm. and again we've went we've not went max special attack because i don't feel we need it um because we've got the calm mind on there that's gonna it's just an option to kind of help us um boost its defenses, boost its attack, if we kind of feel like we've got an opportunity to do that. Um, Sylvian as well has got super low base speed, or a decently low base speed to really take advantage of the trick room. Um, and then we've opted for helping hand support on there as well. Um, it's going to kind of 
benefit things like uh, Agarados so you know the calcs that we've got with the the dragon dance we can get automatically with a helping hand as well on there yeah, that, that's the real, that's key. Like that helping hand is going to give us the Dragon Dance damage calls without actually setting up the Dragon Dance. That's huge. Oh, so the thing about the Zillion is um, looking at their team, we really only needed to have Hyper Waste because they have a lot of things that are just weak to Hyper Waste spam. So we figured, okay, we can go Calm Mind Hyper Waste and then have Helping Hand as a support. So Sylvia, I'm not really like an all out attacker here, but a little bit more of a support option. But if you get to set up a Calm Mind or two on them, they're going to be in, a, in huge trouble just because we hit. Most of their team for at least neutral damage with it. So the bigger systems are only really like the Mega Steelix and Rodan. Yeah, and like if we can get like at least like one or two car mines up, I mean we're going to be taking like do such good damage to like the Lele mm -hmm. as well and things like that. And they haven't got Wide Guard on their team, so we don't even need to worry about you know um, mm -hmm. that being an option for them. So we can spam the spread moves. That we've oh, got yeah. access to as freely as we want throughout the game. So mm -hmm. that's the Sylvian. And then we'll move on to our Rhyperia, which again, um, it's got a few quirky little things on there, but um, it's primarily going to be um, really good in Trick Room again. So, you know, mm -hmm. even outside of Trick Room, we've given it solid rock so it's able to take the super effective attacks uh, a lot better than it would have with the alternative ability of like light and rod or something like that um, most most importantly um this this rapier can tank a waterfall from mega sharpedo it's like the big call cable solid rock that's huge that's <laughs> so huge <laughs> mm -hmm. um we go the grand room z so we've got the tectonic rage as well mm -hmm. Um, and we opted for substitute as well so that's going to kind of you know there'll be openings where we have it in um yeah. And if we get a sub up, it's going to be huge for us, you know, um, sitting in front of a Lele or something like that. So we can just fire off the Tectonic Rage without any fear of kind of being killed by um, a Shattered Psyche or anything like Deoxys might throw at us as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember why we put 8 speed on it? I think it's something like Oranguru that we're looking at here. No, I think it was Mega Steelix. Yeah. Something that, there, there was something that we were looking at. I'm pretty sure it was for uh, what's Mega Steelix based speed. I, it's like thirty. It's still thirty. It might have been a Ranguru. That I think it was something like uh, min speed or Ranguru, because it's base sixty. So if it's zero IVs and okay, no, that's not it. We're still a little bit faster. There was some purpose to it. I don't exactly remember what it was. No, I can't but, remember. Um, it might have been in Powden actually. Powden. That's. Uh, not going to be too important anyway, so let's not lose our ass about it, but I'm pretty sure I had a good reason for ACP on it. <laughs> very, very sure. It'll get revealed anyway, in the match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. Um, um, yeah, so that's, and then you've got the rock slide for hitting stuff mm -hmm. like Togetic and Rotom Heat for decent damage as well. Um, yeah, so, so very straightforward. So basically we're using it mostly for the big Ground Z Earthquake. Yeah, it's like the main purpose to have it here, and uh, that stuff was actually your idea, so um, might be good. Like, if we can find an opportunity to set a substitute up, it's going to be huge because they'll have to get around that, and we just fire off like rock slides or earthquakes. Yeah, and especially like the rock slides in Trick Room, if Rafu is mm -hmm. faster, then you know it's going to be nice to try and just fish for those flinches if we can. Oh so. yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, and then we've got to round up the six. We've got the magma. So the Magma is pretty key in this match as well. Um, and we had a hard job um, selecting because we've both got to select three Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And we want certain Pokemon on each side of the field. So we want mm -hmm. like a helping hand to use it on both sides of the field. So it was, it was really difficult kind of. And we wanted the, the Obama Snow to sit on the same side as the Mega Gyarados. And, you know, it was really difficult to kind of fit everything in, wasn't it? When we were kind of yeah. looking at how we are going to select our Pokemon to kind of match up so we've got everything on the right side of the field so we can have both Pokemon that we want out at the same time and switches that we want um, for the same time and things like that. Yeah, but, we actually went for a slightly non-optimal setup there, like dividing the six Pokemon between us two, uh, simply because it wasn't possible otherwise. So we have Necrozma, Rapier, and Magma on one side, and we have the Gyarados, Abumas, and Solvion on the other side. Yeah. And the bad thing about that was, I think we wanted 
Red Carrier to be on the Gyarados side, I mm. believe that was what we wanted, something like that. Yeah, but we couldn't, we needed the help and hand. I think it was the help yeah. and hand on each side that kind of like forced our hand into to not being able mm-hmm. to do that. Because um, the point is having two help and hand users on the same side of the field when, you know, you've got two big, like you've got Necrozma on one side and Mega Gyarados yeah. on the other side. So you really want to be, they're the two Pokemon that were kind of basing the help and hand behind uh, a lot of the times, outside of the right area, of course. So we mm-hmm. wanted just to make sure that we had the options on each side. But the Magma is a pretty cool set. Like you came up with the, the EV spread for it with the, um, and the, the modest nature yeah. with the overheat was primarily for the Mega Steelix. Um, yeah, that's true. So it gives us like, is it, it's a one shot, isn't it? Or is it a really high roll? I think yeah. it's a one shot if they're like not specially bulky, but if they have some special bulk, then we're gonna need some chip damage. But yeah, but yeah, we... it's a one shot if they're like max HP and like four special defense. Yeah, and then the rest of it was just kind of put into defensive bulk, um, mm-hmm. so we can take advantage of the follow me um, and just kind of, you know, the, if the, if the um, uh, what is it, the Mega Shapedo tries to go for like Aqua Jets, and we can pull it into that, then we've always got the chance yeah. of the flame body and things like that, so it's quite nice um, in that respect. Yeah, we just wanted to be able to tank like the Earthquakes a little bit better from the Hip Pad and the Steelix, and something like a Z-Move from Tapu Lola is going to KO us anyways, unless we go like super specially bulky, I think, so it was kind of the thought behind this. I think we still take like a Life Orb Psychic from the Tapu Lola, so that's nice. Mm. It's like, uh, even choice specs, I think, actually. Yeah, it's going to be tough, life orb. But yeah, so we wanted just to maximize our physical book there, just to tag the earthquakes and stuff a little bit better, especially if we factor in Intimidate. Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing. And that's a nice thing, I think, about our side of the field. We've got those two big physical attackers in Mega Gyarados and right here, but they, again, don't have any Intimidate support. So yeah. you don't really need to worry about our calcs on that end of things. Um, mm-hmm, the only mm-hmm. thing I think we'd have to worry about a little bit would be potential will-o'-wisps from that raw heat. But then again, that's kind of one of the reasons why we chose the magma to yeah. make sure we've got like an option to, you know, pull those will-o'-wisps away so it's not affecting uh, a physical type attackers. And again, mm-hmm. like magma supports the abominus now against the raw heat, and you know, like really yeah. tight situations, just being able to kind of pull away those fire type attacks that are threatening and um, allow Mega Bombers not to do whatever it needs to that turn if it kind of comes down to that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So our main strategy here is um, try to destroy, like delete one Pokemon off their field with like the Necrozma and Bombers in a combination. As we're heavily expecting Togedic to come out early on, we this is actually our best op- option to like remove it from the field on turn one mm-hmm. with the uh, Zemu from the Necrozma and the Blizzard from Abomas now. And then we can take it from there rather freely. So we could like reverse the Trick Room. Even if Steelix comes in, Necrozma can take um, an instructed attack from Steelix um, as long as it's just switching our Gyarados for Intimidate. So uh, we're pretty much guaranteed to reverse the Trick Room if we decide to set it up. And then we can like freely take the game from there and think about what we want to do. Yeah, I think we're fine, and because it's best of one as well. Um, yeah, I think we've got. I feel like we've got all the tools we need to to kind of mm-hmm. tackle the team um, quite well. And like we said at the start of the video, like these six of the six we're going to bring no matter what they yeah. decide to bring, really. Um, and I'm kind of hopeful that the Obama Snot and the, the Mega B Drill will kind of. Um, give them enough of a headache in team preview for them to kind of maybe throw them off slightly with, with what we're going to yeah, do. Um, for sure. Like one idea I had with the uh, the Ambipom was to scarf it, um, <laughs> which sounds crazy because it's pretty fast anyway. But if you scarf an adamant, uh, adamant nature Ambipom, you can use the U-turn into the Deoxys and that will pick up the kill, um, which is pretty mm-hmm. nice. Um, the, the, we had Switcheroo there to kind of um, disrupt their Orangaroo and um, if it went for Trick Room or something like that, locking yeah. it into it. Um, or, you know, other other Pokemon they've got on the team and then kind of just filling it out with the, the low kick mm-hmm. which hit the Mega Steelix and the Double Edge. But the thing is, we're not really going to be bringing it, so it doesn't really matter yeah. too much. Um, and then yeah. just kind of cover the, the B drill there. 
um, mm-hmm. as well. We're not really going to be bringing that, but yeah, it's, it's enough of a threat, I think, to kind of throw a few like spanners in their plan. I mm-hmm. think. Yeah, our main concern with the Ambipom in the end was the fact that they have like foamy users in ElectiWire and especially Dogatech. So, mm-hmm. um, like thinking over the strategies, we're like, okay, um, Ambipom would be valuable, but at the same time, they follow me. So, again, uh, probably might not be too useful after all. And a bonus note, just like we just straight up win with damage in the end. So, we try to just nuke their foamy user down if they come out and then like try to take control of the field with stuff like Trick Room or start setting up the Arrows or Solion. Yeah, I still think that the biggest threat to us to us is going to be the um, the Mega Steelix Oranguru. If they get that set up um, mm-hmm. in Sandstorm as well, that's going to be yeah pretty scary for us. So we just need to make sure that we're utilizing the Intimidates um, mm-hmm. and then taking control of the the, the Trick Room with our own Necrozma. Yeah. Like we keep saying, like we've said. Yeah, but you're you're feeling think, pretty confident about the the matchup. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah I think so. so too. I think we have, as I said, we have all the right tools to handle the matchup. Mm. And we have thought about most crazy things they could throw at us, and I don't think there's anything that could potentially catch us off guard. We've went over the most of the um possible, like the likely scenarios that could happen. Yeah. And. Yeah, like I don't think they'll try to catch us by surprise. I think their way of playing this is try to play the trick room mode as well as they can. Yeah, and uh, that's going to be their best option to win this matchup. But with Necrozma, I think we should be safe. As the only thing that actually hits it hard is their Mega Torpedo, and for that we have our Solion. And I don't think so, they're going to bring it. I don't like. I think they've got to bring the Steelix if they go on that Trick Room mode, so I don't think we need to worry about it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if they bring Mega Torpedo on top of the Trick Room mode, they're going to run into troubles too. So, like, they have to decide on whether or not they want to try and get around our Necrozma by using the Mega Torpedo, or if they just want to try to play out their Trick Room mode as well as they can. Hmm. But, yeah, we've went over this, and I think there's, like, no way they will be able to um, hold control of the battlefield for too long, just because we have so many tools to protect Necrozma with. So it can actually reverse the trick room if they decide to set it up. Yeah, so we're leaving behind Rotten Frost and Electabuzz this time, but hopefully mm-hmm. in the coming weeks we'll be able to feature both of them because they're, they're going to be handy in some yeah, of the other matchups sure. that we're coming up against. But um, I think that like, does it, mate, I think. How do you think? Is there anything else you want to cover before we close it off? I think we've actually got everything covered. So we, we laid out our main strategy, bringing those six Pokemon, uh, our game plan is take control, like prevent them from setting up their trick room mode. So we use Necrozma for that, and then we have a lot of different, you know, center pieces we can use to take control of the for the rest of the battle. So we can try setting up our Gyarados outside of the trick room. We can try setting up our Sylveon. Uh, we can get our Rapier behind the substitute. Like there's so many ways we can hold control of the battlefield once we prevent them from setting up their trick room mode. And that's going to be our main goal here, and that way we are going to beat the Blue Honeys in the first week. Definitely, we're going to take it. And I think the Abomus now, like the hail, was such a good shout from your end, because mm-hmm. it's just going to just make sure that we keep control of that weather, no matter what. We don't need to switch yeah. in and out. Um, it, it kind of rounds out the strategy. Like we prevent literally everything they have just yeah. by having a Necrozma and a Blue now. Yeah. And I think both both mods that they could potentially go with, we've got stuff that takes advantage of both sides of that as well. So mm-hmm. I think we're going to be good. And Blue Honeys are coming for you. We're coming for it for sure. Coming, yes. Um, All right. So the match will be played tomorrow. Um, mm-hmm. So keep an eye out on um, my friend Hibiki's YouTube channel. Um, oh, yeah. It's going to be mine. He'll be showcasing the match. Um, mm-hmm. So I will put another link to his uh, YouTube channel down in the description below. Guys, definitely go check his channel out. It is awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm a regular watcher, so I think you all should be as well. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're kind of prepped and set up for this match, and I think we're gonna do all right. So we'll um, we'll be back again. I think that is it. The following Friday that we're. Yeah, We've it's going to be a fun Friday against Team Greenball, the previous champions. Yeah, and that's going to be super tough because that's mm-hmm. Marcus and Wolfie. They're the current reigning champions, which is no surprise. Um, mm-hmm. So it's probably going to be a, one of our tougher matches for this. Yeah. Th- this. But we got some ideas for it already. So Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. So definitely check out our next. 
team building kind of um, episode, which will be next Friday, um, kind of prepping for the team dream ball. Because we have, we've got some awesome ideas for that. So hopefully <laughs> it kind of all comes together and uh, it's going to be really cool to kind of um, see the outcome of that match. Yeah. So guys, we'll wrap things up there. Um, you can check out Hibiki um, on Twitter and his YouTube channel. Um, is there any other handles you want to kind of... Nah, Twitter or YouTube, that's fine. Cool, I'll put those in the description below, guys. Like I said, go check them out if you haven't already. You can follow all of the MBL um, Season 2 news and action through the their Twitter handle, which is Pokemon, at Pokemon MBL. Um, they also have a YouTube channel. I'll link that in the description below, and that's got all the content, all the team analysis stuff from the analysis guys, and uh, the Discord um, chat as well. Fan Discord chat. I'll put the, that in the description below, and go on there and show your support for Team Leaky. It's been awesome so far, guys, but we're still probably quite low down on the ranking, I would imagine. We're actually the underdogs, like we have the least amount of supporters on the fan discord right now, so we need you guys to change that. Yeah, and I will be hopping on the, well, yeah, I'll be on a lot more, so I'll be around a lot more. I've been kind of tied up with stuff, but I will be on there. So do come on, join us, and show your support for Team Leaky, because we're, we're coming. We're coming, and the NBL is starting, so. We're coming for them, yeah. Yeah, anything you'd like to add before we cut this off, dude? I think we're good. So we're gonna we're gonna win the net, we, the first week matchup against the Blue Honeys. They've we've been at, they've actually been trash talking us a lot. I've been trash talking them a lot too on the Discord. So it is actually a very you know high stakes battle there. Yeah. And yeah, we we, we, <laughs> we got this. So we've actually fought a lot of our match, and I think we were very well very, very well prepared for the match. Yeah, and then we can kind of really start the smack talking once we beat them. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. So thanks for watching this team building video, and hope you're looking forward to tomorrow's battle. Yeah, thanks, guys, and see you later. Bye bye.